Good day folks, this video is dedicated to a good friend of mine now, a silent key, V1KBN, who gave me some advice when I was first building antennas. He said that if you're building an antenna, there are three things you should keep in mind. I said, oh, what's that? He said, adjustable, adjustable, adjustable. <laughs> we both had a good laugh, but uh, I took his advice and it hasn't failed me yet. Some of you may be looking through antenna books and see something like this. This is a, a representation now of a half wave antenna. Half wave. Half wave antenna. Now, if you're using this on the two meter band, that's easy numbers. Because a half wave on two meters just happens to be one meter. So we got one meter from here to here. And we'll call this point here the center of the antenna. Now, once again, you may have seen this in uh, some antenna books. I'll represent it as close as I can for you. Whereby, there is your coax. And we have your braid. And, of course, your main insulation out. Now, some of you may have seen this in antenna books and may have wondered what's going on because they show the braid joined to the center of the antenna. Now, the first thing you're going to say, why is my driven element grounded? <laughs> well, the reason for that is because according to antenna theory, the voltage at the center of a half-wave antenna is zero. So you could ground it at that point. Then they take the center of your coax in the diagram and come out and show the design for a variable capacitor. Now, some of you are looking at this and say, variable capacitor? grounded driven element. Now if you can get past having your driven element grounded, you're well on the way to understanding how this works. This capacitor happens to tune out any uh, off frequencies, any feedback from it. On this feed point here, we'll call this a shorting bar. Uh, this could be varied in, in the design and this can be varied as well. So the adjustability comes into play with this uh, antenna design. It's a great little design. It makes for easy tuning of your antenna, all built into the design, which is great stuff. Now, a capacitor, by its simplest terms, is two conductive plates separated by a, a dielectric. So, Conductive would indicate that it'd be some sort of metal. And the two plates separated by a dielectric can be shown here. This is a simple capacitor. We have two plates separated by dielectric. If I vary the amount of surface area, this will vary the capacitance, the amount of capacitance. There are three main factors. The size of the plates, the area, the distance between the plates, and, of course, the type of dielectric used. Now, there are other factors, such as humidity and stuff, but uh, those are the three main factors that uh, you really uh, have to bear in mind if you're trying to reach a certain range of capacitance, for instance. Now, on a two-meter band, you don't need a whole lot of capacitance. As a matter of fact, it's recommended that it's about 7 picofarad. 7 picofarad per meter of wavelength. 7 picofarad per meter of wavelength. So if you're using it on the 2 meter band, for instance, it'll be somewhere around 14 picofarad, which is not much capacitance. So you don't need a whole lot, in other words. 
So, when you think variable capacitor, most people would think of something along the lines of what they see in old tuners and old receivers and that sort of thing. Something of this nature, whereby you have sets of plates that mesh in with other ones. And this is a variable capacitor. Now, if all those plates are removed and we're just one of each left, just two plates, it would still be a capacitor, but reduced down to its simplest form of two plates separated by a dielectric. Now, the dielectric is just another word for insulator. There are various types of dielectric, most common being air. This would be known as a air variable. So that would be the most common. You could also get vacuum variables. They're probably about the best, and they can handle the highest voltage. So there is uh, such a phenomena as dielectric voltage breakdown. So if you get too much voltage that the dielectric can't handle, it can break down in arc, and that could be a bad day. In its very simplest form, nobody said that the plates had to be flat. This is a capacitor. This is a variable capacitor. Doesn't look like much, I know. I have an aluminum rod here, some heat shrink, and another layer of insulation put into an aluminum tube. As this is moved in and out, the distance between, not only, not sorry, the distance, but the area between the two plates, this plate and this plate here, this area changes. So therefore, the capacitance changes. And this is how your tuning enters in in this type of an antenna. So it's a great way of feeding a, a half wave. Now, putting this into practice, see something like this here. It's a uh, two meter antenna, it's a half wave, so it's about one meter long. You can see uh, a connector here, where you can screw on your coax. Connector is grounded to the center of the antenna, and it has a rod connected to the center of the of the uh, connector the body of the connector is grounded with the center of the antenna the center of the connector is actually uh, connected to the gamma rod now the gamma tube this is done with uh, heat shrink uh, it's great insulation as well so there's something else you can use any type of insulation plastic whatever you can find and uh, get some tubing now this is drilled this is a solid piece that's drilled here you can see and uh, it didn't require much because the heat shrink that's on there uh, don't allow for a whole lot of distance between the two plates so therefore you don't need much of it inserted for the amount of area to make up the amount of capacitance needed but this is the shorting bar so this will be this part of the antenna there's a shorting bar here this is your capacitor and your of course your ground connection is with the braid on your coax and your live connection is directly to your capacitor. Now this can be uh, applied to other bands besides the two meter band if you want. I built one experimentally a few years ago, never did use it, been laying around and collecting dust. This is uh, the same concept for UHF and uh, you can see that it's uh, basically the same, same type deal. You get your connector here, connects to a gamma rod, it's insulated inside of a tube as a shorting bar to the main element. So it's basically uh, exactly the same thing, only made for, it's a bit shorter, because of course it's made for UHF, and the wavelength on UHF is much shorter. This is about a half wave on uh, UHF headband, about around 450 megs. Also, too, we'll take a look at the gamma match on the 6-meter halo antenna. Still a half-wave antenna, but it's made into a loop. But the gamma match is still basically the same. We have your connector here. Connector body is grounded with the center of the antenna. And the center of your connector goes directly to the gamma rod. In this case, it's a quarter-inch diameter aluminum rod some plastic tubing that snugly fits that and all that just fit into this nice uh, aluminum tubing and the shorting bar for this one 
it's actually just a strap so there's a couple of uh, nuts and bolts and washers and keeps the strap there and a little cap to keep water out of it so this can be loosened here and you can slide the tube in and out and this provides uh, your variable capacitance tuning for this antenna so it's a great way of uh, feeding a uh, two meter antenna or a UHF antenna or even a six meter antenna I've used it uh, on uh, all of them so far and got great results it's a great way to tune the antenna where you have the set screws and you can loosen it up and make final adjustments and tune your antenna directly in another thing too this type of antenna makes it uh, really great for mounting on the side of a tower you mount it off the tower like this and in this configuration it doesn't interfere with anything that you may have at the top of your tower it can be mounted off from the side so far up mounted bolted directly to it and pointed towards your favorite repeater now in this configuration it will behave like a two element beam because if your tower is metal of course it will act as a reflector now if you wanted to add on this antenna with the boom and add more directors it becomes even more directional and you have yourself a Yagi. So this, the Gamma Match, is a great way of feeding not only a half-wave element, but also a half-wave driven element in the case of a Yagi. So it makes it a, uh, a great, great way. Easy adjustability, all built in, uh, no moss, no fuss. Uh, set it up, tune it in, and uh, let it go. And uh, I'd recommend it to anybody. Very easy, very simple, very satisfying, and very rewarding. Thank you very much for watching, guys. Hope you enjoyed this little uh, exploration into the Gamma Match. It's a great way of uh, doing things. Makes it a lot simpler. Makes it a lot uh, easier when it comes tuning time. Thanks for watching, guys. Bye-bye.